Okay, you'll all notice the um, the window that you're presented with when you start up Premiere. It's just asking you to create a new project or open one. So if you'd just like to click on the um, new project, new project icon, and then you're presented with this dialog here. And um, if you want to select the browse button and then navigate to, on your computer, it's, because it's Mac, it's different. If you want to navigate to the C drive on those computers, um, so yeah, click browse, and then go to, go to computer, computer, yeah, and then uh, sorry, yeah, OS install C. So yeah, the top, the top hard disk, yeah, the hard disk at the top basically, yeah. And then did you? That's it. And then there's this folder called Kadan, yeah. And then project folder, and then select Premiere. And uh, yeah, if you just click select folder, that, that's okay. Yeah, it's just to keep it. It's just sort of you know, keep it all tidy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can you can give it a name there if you want. Sorry, which one? You can give it a name if you want. Yeah. Um, so I, I need to do that as well. And then just OK. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you just click OK once you've named it. So um, I don't know what. To, you want to name it for now, but I'll just call mine Matt, I suppose. Call it your name, maybe? Yeah. And then you're presented with the new sequence window, which looks complicated. It's got lots of presets on it, but you, you can choose a preset. But what we're going to do today is we're going to keep it really simple, and we're going to let Premiere adjust itself to the footage we're importing. So we're going to, we're going to basically just click OK here. Just to, whatever settings it's on, it doesn't matter. Just click OK. Just, just to get Premiere open quickly. Um, so now we're presented with the, you know, the, 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 the main interface, which Lizzie described earlier on, with the timeline, the program window here, on the right, on the top right, uh, and the source monitor here on the top left, and then down on the bottom left here, you've got um, the uh, project window where you import all your footage. So if you want to um, right click in the project window, the bottom left, and then click um, import. <coughs> and then if you navigate back to the C drive, where you, where you uh, saved the project earlier on, so it's on the C drive, Kadan. On mine, it's on the desktop. But, um, so the project folder. Is everyone? Yeah, it's called. I think it's called OS install on those computers. And then CAD on. Yeah, and footage. And then if you select both the um, both both the uh, videos in there, basically. And then just click import. So then you should have them, have them like, yeah, that's it. You can, you, can, you can select both of them if you shift and select. You hold down shift or control, yeah, yeah. And that's it, that's good. Open. That's it. And there they are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got that? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if we close that, um, yeah, just that, um, window mode, just um, try and play it. So, once. So so if you um, select those over here, oh, yeah. just wait for these. Uh, yeah. Lovely. And then press open. And then 
and then it will import them into into Premiere. Oh, so I'm tempted to click import Pro. Oh, yeah. You just have to read. Yeah, it's a different yeah. word yeah. because you kind of go to Finder then and write yeah. different terminology. Right. So you need to good. say different. Everyone's it. Yeah. Um, Everyone's in. Great. Let's do that again and import the. <laughs> this time we'll import the um, Cadarn logo. So if you right click and import in that space again. And if you go upper upper directory, uh, back up to the um, project folder, and if you go into other elements, see that. And then if you select all of those, you can you can click and either shift and select all of them, or just click and drag and drag a box select around all of those files. And just import them again. You can either select at the bottom and then click and drag, so you can like box select like that, and then that selects all of them, and then you can just click oh. open. And that's it, they're all in. <laughs> so we've got... So we've got all the footage in now, I think everyone has. So now we need to. Oh, I just wait. Just need to do a bit of organisation now to keep it tidy. Yeah, like Lizzie said. <laughs> so we need to create the bins that, that that Premiere calls them. They're just folders, but Premiere likes to call them bins. So if you want to um, see this little icon down here, the bottom left, you've got icon view and list view. You just select list view. Then it then then it puts all the footage in, in lists yeah, and it sort of so yeah that's it. It it's kind of gives you a bit more space to work with. Yeah, and then if you right click on in that space again, just in, anywhere in the in the in the blank space and go new new item uh, sorry new bin yeah right click a new bin, and then you can call that footage. And then if you want to select. Yeah, so footage, yeah, and then that's good. And then if you select the farm and sh control and select, sorry, shift and select the office scene. So select farm and then hold down shift. You don't have to hold down shift. You can, uh, you can, you can just um, select one and if you just click it, click it, hold, hold it down and then drag it into footage. So if you click on farm, farm three, yeah. just left, left click right on the on the actual name. That's it, and just click and hold. Oh no, you can ignore it actually. Just do it one at a time if you want. So it's left, left click and drag into footage. Uh, let's have a go. Let's have a go. So, left click, click and hold, drag into footage. When, when it changes to the hand, then you can move it, and then it's in footage. And then you can do the same with office scene. Click and, click and drag. It's just, just that one. Left click, click and hold. Yeah. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> So, awesome. um, and then if you want to right click in that space again and click a, create a new bin, call it other elements. Make this is just, it, like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, another, another bin, <laughs> sequences. So we'll create three bins for now, sequences, footage, and other elements. And then you can drag in, <laughs> you want to select the Cadarn animated stinger and click and hold it and then drag it into other elements. Just It's just organizing basically. Um, and then also the veg box voiceover. Would you say it's footage or other elements? You can make your own choice. Yeah, you can make your own choice. Yeah, it's just, just sort of basic organizing. And we're going to put sequence one into sequences because we might end up with multiple sequences. Yeah. 
Oh, and then we've got a, we've got an image as well. That this is yeah, that. Yeah. If you double double click on the image, that long see that long file name with lots of numbers. It's a it's an image file. You just double click on it. You can view it in the source monitor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you see the one at the top. That one. Yeah, just double click on that, and then there you go. That's the source monitor that that, that allows you to preview any of the footage that you have. Um, so you can put you can click and you can put that into the other elements bin if you want or it's it's you know yeah. it's kind of kind of up to you how you organize this really isn't it this is just a good example um because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise if you import loads of video footage it just gets really busy here and then you get very confused <laughs> okay so likewise if you if you expand the footage folder or bin and double click on the, on, on the farm for example farm 3 and then you, then you can play it in the source monitor and now what now we've got all the footage in it's probably a good idea to save this um, so if you just go file select file save as uh, well, we pointed Premiere. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just save. Just get file save. Yeah, you're right. That's free, free, yeah. free video, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting confused. Okay. So, now we can start editing. So, if you want to select, say, the office scene. Select the office scene. Select, click, click and hold the office scene. So click once and hold down, and then drag it onto the timeline. So the timeline is, you can you can either click in the source monitor like that, yeah, and then when when it says keep existing settings or change sequence settings, if you click change sequence settings, that's now that's now set up Premiere to uh, the correct settings for that piece of video footage which is full HD there's multiple ways of setting Premiere up to full HD um, but if your footage is full HD and you bring it in in this way and you click change sequence settings then Premiere adjusts itself to the video footage the reason why I said it said um, drag pull in the um, office scene onto the timeline first is because I know it's full HD <laughs> whereas <coughs> um, if you now now if you select the farm three MP4 and again drag that behind, sorry, well drag it to the right of the other footage like that and let go. Now if you then select the playhead, which is the yellow thing. Yeah. I've got two locks. I don't know what I've done if you just select the second office scene, which is up there. Yeah. Yeah. And then just hit delete on the keyboard yeah that's okay so if you now if you okay farm I blame the cameraman myself <laughs> so you notice that the farm footage isn't at full HD so you've got black bars around it which is this is deliberate this is <laughs> yeah so now you can Oh, yeah. Resolution. You can press space bar to play it if you want. What have you done? Have you done anything clever yet? No, nothing yet. We're just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <It's not quite laughs> <too clever, maybe. laughs> no. Nope. There's some kind of hope in that, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> the, the yet <laughs> implies that some cleverness will follow. Cleverness <laughs> will arrive. So has everyone got? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just. Oh. Right. Ah, yeah. I wasn't quite sure what that change settings was. So I was just trying to do oh, that okay, again. yeah, yeah. So if you drag the, the farm footage down. as well, down. yeah, <laughs> and then if you drag the playhead over the farm footage, it should have the black bars around it. Yeah, because it's it's sort of shot in. I think it was shot in 720p instead of 1080p. I can't remember. Oh, I thought it was some ran, random rubbish. Right. Yeah. That yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you can you can actually delete the gap. So if you you can select the gap. If you if you left click, you can zoom in with the plus and minus keys, if you need to. 
So if you just use the plus and minus keys here. Oh, oh sorry, actually here. As long as this window is highlighted, you can zoom in and out. And you can see the, see the gap there. You can actually select that gap by just left clicking on it. Left. And then, and then you, can, you can either select as you did. Um, you can just press delete and it will delete the gap and pull the two pieces of footage together. Or you can right click on the gap. <coughs> Did it not? If you, if you, maybe, maybe you want to zoom in a bit more. Um, that's and now if you hit delete. Um, maybe not that delete. Maybe the delete that's um. Sorry, the delete that's next to the one that's below insert. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So if you just click there once, and then hit delete, it'll, yeah, it'll delete the gap. <coughs> oh, I'm getting tangled up. Okay, so now we're going to, we've got footage on our timeline. If you want to click anywhere on the timeline, like, like in a space, basically. Oh, you might need to zoom out a little bit. So if you press the mi minus key to just zoom out to give you a bit of space oh. to work with. You can also zoom in and out with the little slider at the bottom here. It doesn't work out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So you click and drag on the bottom there. It's your computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> zooming in and I'm zooming out. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want to just box select, so if you click and drag from the left, sorry, from the right to the left, just over all the footage, then you can click and drag all of, all of it to uh, move it over to give, give, give yourself a bit of space. Because we're going to bring in yet some more footage <laughs> to put in front of that footage. Are you going to do the resizing? Yeah, we'll do. Oh, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> So has everyone got space at the beginning of? No. Oh, okay. If you click two together. Um, if you click and select uh, to the right of that footage, so completely off the footage, click and hold, and now drag to the left. Oh, that's it. Drag to the left over both pieces of footage. That's it. And now, re now release. That's good. They're both selected now. Now, if you click once there, just where you are now, and oh, sorry. No, sorry, not that. It's just uh, uh, move that back up again. That's just a little volume controller there. It's quite. It's good. I to seem to have shrunk. I don't know what I did. Oh no, it's okay. You just zoomed in, and zoomed out. You, it, it's okay. It's a good idea to use the plus and minus keys quite a lot, so you can zoom in and out. Ah. Ah, yeah. Um, if you, yeah, when 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 that happens, you can either. Yeah, you might need to zoom in a bit on that. Oh. Yeah, I think you. Oh, there we go. So I'll bring it back to its original size again. So is that because you can click and drag like this and then select? Um, yeah, that's so that's its original length again now. So if I just um, move that to there, basically we want to just select the footage and then drag it to the right. So we've got a bit of more space at the start. Um, yeah, I might want to zoom out. And if you select here, you click and drag left. That's it. And now and release. And then just select. No. Oh no. I tell you what. Um, <laughs> it's just Control Z that. We we'll use. Let's just. I'll just move that up to there. We can. We can also use the um, track select tool. The track select tool might be easier actually. Then, when you use this tool, it just selects everything automatically on that track. And then you, you always have to make sure you go back to the selection tool afterwards. Um, okay. <coughs> Right. Has everyone got a gap at the beginning yet? Yeah, they're all right. 
Um, so if you now want to select the Cadarn animated stinger in other elements and drag it drag it in front of the other footage. If it's going to overwrite it like that, then you might want to push it upwards so that it, so that it um, goes onto a different track. Yeah. Because um, Premiere will quite happily put footage over other footage and just sort of cut into it. It's not affecting the original files though, it's just, you know, it's just part of the edit, edit, edit process. And then if there's any gaps like there is on mine, you can select that gap and you can just delete it by pressing the delete key. Or you can right click and select ripple delete. And then it, then it, then it gets rid of the gap. Yeah, select the select the nothing <laughs> in between. Yeah, click. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to play it, you just press space and then you can play it and it'll play the CAD on logo, then the office scene, and then the farm scene. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you way ahead. <laughs> oh, right. So there you go. Yeah, so it's playing, playing the logo, then it will play the office scene, then the farm scene. Okay. Nice playing. Yep, and you, you, you probably all know how to uh, click and drag the and scrub along the timeline with the yellow the yellow playhead. It's just a case of selecting it. Um, click, click on the, the actual yellow playhead. Yep, and then you click and hold, and then you can drag it left to right, and you can skip through everything. Skip through the video. Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and this is obviously this is fantastic. <laughs> and everyone knows about plus and minus to zoom in and out when you're in the timeline window. That's really useful. So now we're going to cut cut a piece of footage. Now, so we want to <coughs> we can cut cut say the end off the Cadon logo because it's quite long. Because it finishes, it stops doing stuff around about there. So we could we could actually cut cut all this piece off. Um, so if you want to, um, there's, there's, there's different ways of cutting. If, you, if you'd like to zoom in a bit to make it sort of a bit, so you got, you know, you can see it better. Um, okay, we can cut using this tool here, which is called the razor tool, or you can press C to, to bring up that tool quickly. And then you've got a cut tool. And then wherever you click on the footage, it'll just cut it. And then if you go back to the select tool or press V, you can select the piece of footage you don't want and just delete it. And then you can delete the gap in between if you want. And now it's taken the end off that piece of footage. And then it goes straight to the... Shall I, shall I do it again? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that, do that again. <clears throat> so you... you, you, you you don't necessarily have to position this playhead. You can do. Oh, I see. Right, okay. um, if it's a good idea to say you know where you're cutting, yeah. so yeah, you p position the playhead, and then if you select the cut tool or just uh, press okay. press C, bit, which is yeah. this one here, it's got. If you hover over it, it brings up the shortcut key, and then you can cut. You just basically cut where the playhead is, and then if you press V to go back to the select tool, you can select that bit. Am I going too fast? You select V, didn't you? Oh, you press V to, to go back to the select tool. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, or well, you can just select, click on it, yeah. Yeah. And then if you just select the second, the bit that you've, yeah, that, yeah that's it, that bit there. The, uh, so, okay. If you can I had to go with that, but I don't know what I've done. Oh, yeah, okay. You've cut it a bit soon there, so maybe if you control, press Control Z to undo. Control Z, yeah. So if you move it more, move it more to, 
you move the playhead along a bit? Keep keep going a bit more, or sort of maybe to the middle or somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, round about there. It just shows you where you are currently in the currently, you know, where you're about to cut. And then if you press C, this will bring up the cut tool. Yeah, which is also you could just click on that tool. It's the same thing. Yeah. See. And now, if you click and click on the video, on, on the video, it doesn't necessarily have to be on that line. But if you just click, and now if you press V, or just click on that, that's the same thing. And then you can select this piece of footage. Yeah, just just click on it. Not on the yellow line, but just yeah, that, yeah, anywhere like that. Yeah, and then you just hit the delete key, and then it's gone. And then. You can delete the gap if you want to, um, in the same way. Yeah. So that's a simple way of editing. Do you want me to do that again on the screen? Anyone? Did you? Thank you. Did you manage that okay? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's got a camera. <laughs> so we just cut the end off the Cadon logo. When you have the razor blade, should you cut at the end of what you want and go backwards, or could you do at the beginning of what you want to cut and go forwards? Um, I'm not sure where should you put the razor blade. Right. It, well, basically, it, all it does is just split the footage wherever you put it. So, um, right. so if you want the start of the footage, you just right. delete whatever's to the right of the razor blade. Well, what, if what's you come after, right? yeah. So I'll do it again if I if I do it on the screen. I'll do it, but it's more like trial and error. So there we go. I say if I say it stops moving there, the, all the letters. So I want to cut to the right. Yeah. I want to get rid of all this bit here. Yeah. So do you put the razor blade on the red line? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah you don't have to, but but that's you where we want to cut. Right. So you just cut it, then use the select tool, then select that footage. Be careful not to select the yellow line here. That just that is like a volume line. That adjusts the volume for the clip. Nice. Um, that that's, that's an easy thing to do actually is accidentally select the yellow line on each clip because then you end up just adjusting the volume for that clip by accident. Um, if you click it down, it will go to. If you click and drag down, it will go to zero, which is makes it clip silent. But actually, that's that's opacity, which makes it invisible. So that makes it black. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to go into this, but but a lot of people have a lot of people have been doing that by accident. So I thought I'd better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so just select somewhere on the blue bit to select the clip normally, and then just hit delete. Yeah, and it's gone. I think they, I think they yeah. got that. Yeah. yeah, and then you can delete the gap. Got it. OK. <clears throat> so now we've done basic cuts. Um, we can add what is called a transition in to make this fade from black to white. Um, so this is where it gets, this is where we can show you the effects. So I'll, um, if you'd like to navigate to the effects tab, or you don't have to yet, if you want to yeah. watch me, it's up to you. Um, yeah, I'm going to watch you. Okay. <laughs> so the effects tab is, you've got the project tab here, you've got the media browser, which you don't have to worry about, but you've got the effects tab here, and then you've got lots and lots of effects, and one of the most common ones that you, you, you will use if you want to fade from, say, black to video footage is under video transitions and dissolve. These are, the, these are the transitions yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, and, they and, need to be. And I said, don't put a transition between mm -hmm. shots. Yeah. But yeah. if you want to start something, yeah. you should always put transition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah, it's the common mistake when you've got loads of motion going on in one piece of footage and in another piece of footage. And then if you do a transition between the two, you've got a mixture of two mo pieces of motion. In cr and it's, that's when it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So then, <laughs> <laughs> so don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so every, everything is click and drag with Premiere. So you have to select, click and 
hold the cross dissolve and drag it onto the beginning of the clip. And when it, where, where it turns brown, that's when, that's when you can release it. So you can let go then. I'll do that again, zoomed in, because I, I wasn't, I was zoomed out quite a lot there. So I'll, I'll just, you can select that cross dissolve. I mean, this is, this is the result of it anyway, yeah. fades in. Um, but delete that. So if you click and hold on the cross dissolve here, and drag it onto the beginning of the clip, and then let go. And that has to be onto a clip, not onto a space. Yeah, it has to be onto a clip, the cross dissolve, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, yeah, the end of a clip, yes. The very end of a clip. Yeah, it won't. Yeah, yeah. And likewise, you can, you can actually extend or shorten the length of the actual cross dissolve by selecting the end of it. And so if you, if you lengthen it, then the fade will be longer. On the cross dissolve, yeah, you can edit the length of it by clicking and dragging on the end. Yeah. But don't, don't worry too much about editing the length of the cross dissolve. If you want to, how are you doing? Oh, I've got a brown line. Oh, that's, 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 I don't know what I've done. Yeah, that's, it doesn't look like yours. Mm, yeah, that's, uh, that's just the yellow, um, a pasty line. So if you click and hold, click and hold that, yeah. Drag it onto the very start of this clip. That's it. That's where you want it. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And now we're going to do it again on the end of that clip to make it fade out. So if you want to do it again, yeah, click and drag onto the end. I haven't done this yet, but onto the, that's, uh, to the left a bit, up a bit, left a bit. Oh, uh, maybe maybe zoom in a bit. Ah, it's because we've got. It's because we haven't got a gap. Ignore that for now, actually. I'll, I'll um, yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was going to do a cross fade. Then. If you, yeah. If you want to, this is another way of editing. If you, another way of creating a cut. If you want to select the second piece of footage, the office scene, and. Where, where you get where, where it um, <clears throat> where if you hover over the uh, hover over the left um, extent of it, it, the arrow will change to the, the 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 cursor will change to a red line with an arrow on it, which means you can click and drag. That that basically is cutting the start off that piece of footage. Right. Um, Push it out. Does it cut it or just move it? It, it, that, that's that's, cut, that's cutting it. When it's red like that, that's that's cutting it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you can undo it. Can you? Yeah, you can undo it. Yeah. You can you can either click it again, and or you can control Z, or you can just drag it back to how it was if you want. Um, uh, yeah. So now we can add another cross dissolve onto the end of the Cadarn logo. Because if 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 you have no gap there. So we, we created a gap first, because if you don't have a gap, when you put the cross dissolve on, it'll try and blend between the two pieces of footage, which we didn't necessarily want to do. We want to make it fade from the yeah. Cadon logo to black. Yeah. And then we're going to insert a title here. Yeah. And then we're going to fade from black to the office um, oh, scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to... So if we've got a gap... Yeah, has everyone got a gap between the Cadon animated logo and the office scene. Yeah. 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 Great. So and has the Cadarn logo got crossfades on either side of it, the start and the beginning? Sorry, the start and the end? So yeah, you're okay. <laughs> well, it's okay because you're 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 over um you're over nothing there basically. The playhead, it, there's no video footage there, so it's black. Yeah, so that that's a fade from there to nothing. Yeah, that's the that's the fade. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to get out of the next to get red.
So, does everyone want to zoom out a little bit so they get more, so that, so the, so that the timeline looks a bit more like this? If you just press the minus key, just to zoom out a bit, just so you've got a bit more space again. Don't, don't worry if you've got lots of gaps in, in your footage, you can, we can sort that out later. Um, and if you want to box select over the second two pieces of footage again and just drag them to the right to create a bit more room. We want to insert a title now. Uh, so if you zoom out, and then, yeah, and then box. If you just click and drag over, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yep. And then, then you can, yeah, you move it to the right a bit, and that's that's fine. So that was showing you crossfades, basically cross dissolves. Here's trouble. Yeah. Where, where are you looking for? Here. We have. Right. <laughs> Unless she wanted to actually, was she meant to come here? <laughs> I think they were just after computers. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we've all. So we've all added cross dissolves. So that that fades in and out now. Hopefully, it doesn't matter if it. No, doesn't fade out. So if you go back to the project window, we're going to create a title now, which is. A case of basically right clicking in the space. So if you you might want to minimize your folders just so that you've this is why it's kind of <coughs> useful to have everything in folders so so you can minimize things to get get your previous footage out of the way. Um, you click on the little arrows to the left of the yellow folders and then that that yeah that's it. Now you can right click again in the space. And select new item and title. So, yeah, new item title. Yeah. Yeah. And then just click OK. It doesn't matter what the name is yet, you can rename it later. And then you've got the title designer, which is just basically, yeah, just that, that's what it is basically a title designer. If you click um, click once in the middle using the text tool. So there's a text. This is basically in a separate window. So if you, it, it defaults to the type tool. If you just click once, and then you can type in, um, yeah, title, <laughs> or whatever you need to call it. it. Doesn't really matter what you call it. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got all the presets at the bottom, which <laughs> most of them are pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. 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 That's what we need too. Yeah. What's yeah. that? Is there anywhere else? No, because there's only on these computers because it's, uh, oh, right. there's only 12 licenses, so it's just in there. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about that tomorrow. Until 5, so... Oh, so they, they can have it the rest of the week. That's fine. I, I don't look. Well, my wife's on my wife, she said that. <laughs> well, it's only very, this is the one in the whole semester that they haven't been able to get in, so it's not worth the effort. No. To, to look, so you're exonerated. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's not software. Oh. It's, it's psychology software, is it? Yeah, but no, this is focused software for the analysis stuff, so it's only on computers in here. So. Tomorrow will be fine. So, oh, no, 
Once you've... Finish the disclaimer, he spoke to us and there's somebody else on the I'd love to centre that. Okay. Yeah. So once you've created a title, you can, you can use the selection tool to go out of the title creation tool, which is, again, it's V, just to... Or, or, or um, just, just at the arrow at the top left there. I know what you mean, I know what you're looking for. And anyway, if you just select the title, you can move it around, drag and move it around if you want. But you probably just want to centre it, so there's, there's useful tools here where it says centre. Centre, horizontal, horizontal centre and vertical centre. Just click them both. Select both, click both of them and it centres it. And you can keep clicking that because if you change the font size over here on the right, you, you, you can change font size if you want by clicking and dragging to the left or right. Yeah, you've got loads of things to change. Um, you don't really need to worry about too many of them. I mean, there's all sorts of um, effects you can add. <laughs> so you've got you've got font here and um, size font size there, which is which is the most important thing. So font size, if you click and drag it to the right or left, it will change the size. Or you can type in if you want. Yeah, and then you've got color and drop shadow, and it's kind of like a mini Photoshop in Premiere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's it and then you can just keep centering it once you've changed it but you know you can play around with all these settings it's kind of it's there's a lot to go into there so we're not, we're not going to go through all the settings there um, and then and then once you once you're happy with your title which um think um think I am for now and then once you're happy with your title you can just close the title designer it, it doesn't if you close it it's fine it's still there because then you're left with the title in the project window here. So I just close that. Yeah, you just close it once you once you're happy with it. And then that's just a piece of that's essentially kind of like a still piece of video footage. It's treated like you can just drag it on to you want to you, you, you want to drag it either above other pieces of footage or or in a gap. But yeah, not not on top. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to drag it in this space here where there's where I've got where I've got black, blank space, basically. So you know, yeah, I'll just drag it above on a separate track, on a separate channel. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, just, um, cl just close it. Yeah, yeah, close it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got title down there. If you just click and drag the title. And put it uh, in the gap, yeah. Put it where, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. What, what's undo? Control Z. Second. Yeah. Same as the, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. And then you, you see. That's it, drop it there. Yeah. Don't want to do it, sorry. Okay, so, and likewise, you can add the crossfades onto this if you want. So you can go to back to effects and video transitions and you can add a cross dissolve onto the start and onto the end of the title. So then if you have it on a separate track it's a good idea because then it won't try to <coughs> merge between the two because I notice I can see yeah it's a good idea to have it on a separate track. Yeah, if, yeah, if there's a gap. If there's a gap, it's fine. But if that's yeah. two puts it together, it tries to... It tries to blend. To... Hey. Right. Vegetable slaughterhouse leaf from Juice and Wear. Yeah. Got a creative genius right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's> funny. <coughs> so what we want... Um, so... 
Yeah, if you just click on, you might want to. Um, you might want to zoom in just a little bit, and then you can click and drag here to scroll along as well. The, the bar at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, because they lost that at one point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, might, might want to just create a little gap between those two. So you click and drag that to the left a bit. Yeah, so you create a gap. And then likewise there. Yeah. Create a bit of gap. That's it. Now add the cross dissolve onto the start and finish of title. Yeah, that's it. And another one on to the end. Okay, so that's that's basically how to fade, create titles, and basic cutting and editing. Yeah. You can have as many video tracks as you want in Premiere. So at the moment it's it's set to well yours is set to three yours is set to five it 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 you can add and delete tracks by right clicking in this space here add tracks delete tracks let's add another video track there we go just but that's right click anywhere where it says video one two three four yeah and you can add tracks there but most of you have enough anyway so it's that's just a little point. Um, and likewise with audio, because uh, you might need more audio channels depending on how much you need. Oh, it's just 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 adding and deleting tracks. You just right right click on the space and then add tracks. You present it with this little thing. You can add one or you can add many or um, yeah, it's, yeah. So back under. Um, we're just going to show a bit of audio editing now. You, you notice that all the pieces of video footage with audio have uh, an audio track as well. So you've got your video here and then you've got audio, video and audio. So you can unlink this if you want. You're right, we're right clicking on it and selecting unlink and then that allows you to move the audio independently of the video. But we won't do that for now. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that yet. I'm going to link that back. But what I want to do is bring in um, the um, VegBox voiceover, which is a WAV file. It's not a video file. It's just an audio file. So if you go to footage, expand the footage dialog, and if it's in there, if you put it in there, we're looking for the VegBox voiceover wave file. That should be in footage, should it not other elements? It doesn't matter actually. If it might, if it's either in footage or other elements, however, however you chose to, yeah. I put mine in footage, but if you put it in other elements, it's all right. And then again, drag it onto one of the drag it onto one of the audio tracks. I think we need to know how to open the track up so they can see the waveform. Someone just asked me that. Okay. Right. So if you want to see the waveform of the audio, you can expand here the uh, using the arrow key on each track. You can see that if you zoom in, then you can see you can also expand them that way. So, then if you want to see the waveform of, um, and likewise with the video, um, there we go, there's some audio there. This is kind of why you need a big monitor to work with Premiere because <laughs> it's very, yeah, there's a lot of detail in there. <laughs> Oh, there you are. <laughs> so you can play that, and then that's very little to do with a muddy That's playing over the audio of the office scene. But in the case of Aberystwyth University's information services, everyone's got audio working, right? Yeah. Busy. <laughs> 
Um, if you want to adjust the um, volume, if you want to adjust the volume of a clip, there's there's two ways of doing it. In audio, see see the um, yellow bar, that he, the yellow line here. You can click and drag that up and down, and that will adjust the volume of just the clip. So that will do just the clip, or you can go to the effects. Sorry, the audio mix, the audio mixer, and then you've got audio one, audio two, audio three. So it's up here. Sorry, at the top, oh, top oh, left. Yeah, 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 it's near. It's it's um. All oh, right. Okay. So I've been going an hour. No? Yeah. Oh, nearly now. Okay. So yeah. So then there's the audio mixer. Um, yeah. So you can adjust the ch the levels of each uh, track there in the audio mixer. One important thing, because we're running out of time, unfortunately, we'll be able to go over more things like this more w when you're actually editing. So, um, one important thing that w wanted to show you is how to scale this piece of footage that um, that, that, that is the wrong size. Basically, <clears throat> it's deliberately the wrong size so we can scale it. So if you put the playhead over the um, <clears throat> the piece of footage with the tractor, the farm three, I think it is, but yeah, yeah. If you just right click on that piece of footage, you can you can select scale to frame size, and then it automatically pushes that piece of footage to <coughs> to the frame size you're working at, which is full HD. Yeah, yeah, like magic. It's a special clip. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right-click, scale to frame size. That's it. Or there's another way of doing it. I'm going to Control Z that. You can just double-click on the piece of footage. <laughs> there's, there's, there's multiple ways of scaling, and then you can you can click and drag also. So there's that way of doing it. <laughs> just by just by double clicking on the piece of footage, you've got handles that you just click and drag. Yeah. Should I show them the other way as well? Or maybe not. Maybe not. We're going to show all the secrets of Premiere. Yeah. Okay. Might start using it or something. Yeah. So then under, I've literally got effects to do and then exporting. Um, ask if everyone's okay, really. Is, is everyone okay? Is everyone? Do, do, some yeah, some people are going to have going. to go. Cause what, 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 what do you want to show? I just wanted to show them quick colour correction and then then exporting. Oh, where it is. Yeah. yeah. So these guys are going to have to go because they've got their lunch at 12.30, which is now. Okay. And then, yeah. Right. Because we've still got to copy the footage onto their computers. Well, oh, yeah. Can do it, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. If you want, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. No, no, I'm back on. So I just wanted to show you some useful tools under video effects. There's loads of effects under here. Um, color correction is useful in brightness and contrast. Um, so you've got an effects controls tab here, which has motion, opacity, volume per clip um, but if you expand down here uh, the color correction tab see that there you can click and drag on effects onto each clip individually so you can select brightness and contrast for example drag it onto the clip and let go and now up here in the effects controls tab you've got brightness and contrast for that clip so then So you've got the effects tab down here at the bottom, uh, which gives you where you find the effects you want. And then in the effects controls window at the top, it's the same tab as the source monitor. You've got all these tabs on the top, yeah. Um, so if you click and drag brightness, I'll just, um, I'll just delete that and do it again. Click and drag brightness and contrast onto the clip, yeah. Then it'll appear up here in the effects controls. Um, if you've got that window open. So if you select that, 
So you, one way, one way you can get to. I tell you what. If if you go, if you select, see the top here, window. If you, if you, if you um, make sure effects controls is is open. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So then you can you can adjust your brightness and contrast per clip. It's useful because you know sometimes we might be um, using footage that's really dark or something or. Yeah. Oh, when you blow when you blow it up. Um, it, it won't affect the brightness. No, it, it won't affect the brightness. No. <laughs> So it'll just keep 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 any any settings you have up here just stay there basically, regardless of scale or. And likewise, you can um, you can add on multiple effects. So you can add on a click and drag and add on a fast color corrector as well. So then you've got brightness and contrast and fast color corrector. Which is, has the wonderful color wheel. Which has this color wheel, which you this. So if you wanted to go more pink, you move the white dot towards the pink then it goes more pink it's usual because like if you've got um you know if your camera if the white balance is off on your video footage you can correct it here so where was that uh, color wheel? so <laughs> so it's under to get it up you have to drag it on like you would with any down fast color corrector yeah onto the shot you want to change it yeah. And then you've got, and if you scroll down in there, so, yeah. So we could keep going into all this, but I think we should probably go on to exporting now. Yeah, there's just endless yeah. amounts of things we could. There's endless yeah. amount of things yeah. in the Premiere. You'll never learn it all. Luckily, <coughs> excuse me. There's loads of really good um, tutorials online for for all this, all the sort of more complex yeah, side of it. Yeah, yeah. There's loads um, of good one stuff. Of the, one of the things yeah. I I've given you in my presentation is to Adobe TV when they've basically got a course on Premiere. Um, in video, and most of that course is on Linda.com, which is an excellent yeah. paid-for service that you can learn things like Premiere for effects, even teaching like um, technology yeah. teaching. They've got courses, so yeah. Oh, but it's free on Adobe TV. Right. So, right, so let's like let's go on to let's go on to creating an actual movie now. I'm just going <coughs> to. Turn that back because that was that was purple and we kind of like. You yeah. want it <laughs> so to export, we've got this. See this grey bar up here with the yellow handles. But you can you can select the yellow the orange or yellow handles. Uh, they automatically snap to the extent of your video edit, your your edit. Um, that that area there is what's going to be exported basically. So if you click and drag it, out, sorry, if you if you make it do if you extend it beyond your video you just have blackness at the end of your and at the end of your video file so which you don't need that so basically just keep an eye on that and make sure it's covering all of your footage all of your edited footage and then once you're sure that that's okay you can just go file export media and then you've got the export settings up so you just the file menu at the top and export export so I do that again. Just yeah, file at the top and then export. Yeah. See it. Oh, yeah. Media. And then yep. And then here you um, say if you want it to go to YouTube, which is probably the most common uh, preset. I mean, there's yeah. Basically, what you need it on really is H.264, which is the most widely used um, codec these days. So you That's want got to print out for you in your packs with that information mm. on it. Right. How to export from here. Yeah. Um, hey, basically, just 
select H264, and then that creates. Oh, it's having, a, having to think about that. Yeah. Um, and then you've got dozens of presets under the H264 um, codec, which <clears throat> Android. Um, and you've got YouTube if you scroll up and down. You'll find YouTube and Vimeo, which is really good because it kind of automatically sets Premiere up to export to YouTube. So really, you want to select the YouTube HD 1080p 25 setting. You might have to use the arrow keys to go up and down and find it because there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's loads. But it's it's all in your pack. The um, the, the, the good good settings that are good foolproof settings kind of thing. Yeah. Just remember the number yeah. that's yeah. Don't get it wrong. Yeah. Because it will look weird. YouTube H, <laughs> HD 1080p. Yeah, 25. Yeah. It's always 1080p 25 is for exporting. Is good. And then that, basically, that's... that's You don't need to adjust any of the other settings. You have to make sure this source range here is on work area. It, it normally is. It defaults to that, I think. So it should always normally be on work area. That means that's just going to export what you've edited, basically, the, where the um, where the grey bar is in your timeline. So it's work area, not entire sequence. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to. If you if you set entire sequence, it will it will it will basically um, create a really long video file with lots of black space at the end. And, All right. Um, whereas if you select, I'll sh say if I just cancel this, the work area is this this okay. bar here. That's, yeah, that, that's what will be exported if you have work area selected. So file, export, media. <coughs> We've got it on H264 and YouTube. And then here, the yellow, where it says output name. And if you click on where it says sequence one or, or whatever the yellow letters are, that's basically where you're going to put it. So That's the name of your file. Yeah. So then you can navigate to... Um, let's think, where should we go? Sorry. The, um, that button there you get to oh, sorry, yeah, I'm being silly, aren't I? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the, if you go to the project folder and... and just click export. Uh, no, no, uh, oh. Uh, have, you, have you pointed it to the, say, the output folder? So you want to... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, if you go up a level... Ah, you, you, yours is yours is not. You need you need yeah you need to put it on H two six four there. H two six four. Yeah. Oh right. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's it. And then and then where it says Android, it's the, where the preset is below that. Just there. Yeah. And then you've got the masses yeah. of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's it. Cool. Where we, where, where do you recommend we export? Um, well, I mean, it's just being organised, but we, we, yeah, if you go to project folder and then output, output, yeah, so project folders, and then if you set, if you put, if you clicked on the, the, what do I need to? Click just click on the yellow text. On this, yeah. 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 And, and then if, you, go. yeah, so if you put it, move it up, uh, go back to sorry, project folder and then outputs. Yeah. Okay. And put it in there. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, if you've pointed it to the right place, then you're ready to click export. If if you know where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. You can click export, and it'll take a while. Yeah. And then that's going to do all the maths and crunch it down to make it manageable for the internet. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so then that file, um, yeah, it'll appear. It'll appear in your outputs directory, hopefully, if that's. When it's done. Yeah, when it's done. It's creating a temporary file there as well at the moment, but that will disappear and there'll only be one file there uh, once it's finished number crunching. And that file. Yeah. That file being an MP, it's an MP4 file it will create, and that's good for YouTube and Vimeo. So you can upload that to YouTube and Vimeo and it'll look good, it'll look fine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yes. No. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to have to go for lunch, guys.